Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening for another very special edition of Wowza Live with our host, Ned Dennison. Ned? Hello, everyone. I'm the chairperson of the International Marathon Swimming Hall of Fame, and it's our pleasure to uh, have with us one of our honorees, a five-time Olympian from Greece, Spiros. Say hello and pronounce your last name correctly, please. Hello, my name is Spiros Yanyotis. It's a bit difficult. <laughs> um, from Greece. Spiros, um, tell us about your swimming career up until you went to Sydney for the Olympics. Yeah, I started uh, swimming in uh, Corfu. It's an island in um, Greece, of course. Um, that's where I was raised. That's my, my dad is Corfu. Um, and I first, well, I was five years old when I went in the swimming pool. Um, my mom, my mom uh, was a swimmer, so it was, you know, the introduction with swimming was uh, um, easier easier for me because we had a lot of um, talk in any house, of course. And um, so swimming was something uh, it came uh, pretty natural for me. And uh, were you were you swimming competitively as a teenager? Were you a champion? No, I wasn't. Um, the first years of swimming was, you know, always like when you're a kid, you feel like you don't, you haven't got any, um, the competitive um, in you. You just want to swim and just have fun, and that's how that's how swimming is. But um, I, when I was twelve to thirteen years old, the pool in Corfu um, sat uh, the uh, uh, sat down because they wanted to do, to rebuild it. It was an open pool, and they did it an indoor pool, and this was two, three years, two or three, I think two years uh, building it. So for two and a half years, uh, I nearly stopped swimming. And I got back in about 14 years of age, I think it was. So it was a tough a, a tough period for me because I was swimming all, only in the summer in the sea and maybe in a hotel pool that was really, really small and it was not for uh, swimming. Uh, when, I, when I came back, um, I was doing the sprint events uh, I was a 50, uh, 50 meter and 100 meter uh, freestyle, but I was, <laughs> I didn't think I was, I was not so good on it. And uh, one day, um, my coach uh, and training uh, put me a 1500 meter, and I was really close to qualifying for my nationals and the age group then. So it was the first time we, th we thought about uh, doing the big distance in the pool. And that's how I started swimming the big distance in pool. Uh, after a year, a year and a half, I started. Um, uh, my, I was getting, uh, I was improving. So I think after, um, on 16 years old, I was, I was competitive, feeling competitive uh, uh, in the age group uh, nationals. So you went to uh, you went to Sydney to your first Olympics at age 20. T tell us about the experience. Were your eyes this big? Was it, um, you know, all your heroes in the sport? Exactly, it's a, it's a dream come true, you know. It's uh, something that every 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 kid when uh, starts sport and um, is um, looking up on athletes and seeing the Olympics. I think they want to go to the Olympics. That was me as well, and um, in Sydney, um, I swam the four hundred and the fifteen hundred meters uh, freestyle and the relay four by two hundred. Uh, my position, my, my, uh, I was 20th, I think, on the 400 and 21st on the 1500 or uh, something like this. It was not my, they were not really good position. I, I did, I, I was, I did my personal best, of course. Uh, but the most, uh, the, the, I think the, it was so uh, unique and um, mesmerizing all this, um, uh, the Olympic Games, you know, it's you, you, you read about it, you, you see about it, and when you, uh, you're a part of the, the Olympic Games, it's something beautiful, especially in the opening ceremony. I was in the opening ceremony. It was, uh, I, I was, um, I was so, so, um, I could, uh, my feelings were just over the, over, over the top. I couldn't, it was a beautiful feeling. Um, and then, of course, in the competitions, I, I, I was, I was lucky enough to swim with uh, really good athletes. Uh, my role model was Kieran Perkins. I saw uh, Kieran Perkins swim the 1500. Um, he was going for the third goal, but uh, a really good athlete like Grant Haggett uh, uh, was, on the, he, he was on his first gold medal in the Olympics. 
Um, of course, I saw other athletes as well. And the begin the the starting you know, of a, a great athlete, the greatest athlete of uh, all, all time uh, for me, uh, Michael Phelps. So I'm lucky. I saw really good athletes. I, comp I competed with um, Grant Hargett and Kieran Perkins in the 450 meters in Sydney. You know, it's something uh, beautiful. And uh, it made me feel that I want to do even more than my sport. So that's how my first Olympics was. It, it gave me something, to, it, it gave me a push to even to go even better. And for the next four years, how did you train? How did you live? What was your job? Were you still in school? Of course, um, um, for, uh, I stopped school uh, it's up to eight, uh, 18 years old. Um, I, I organized the next four years uh, for the Olympics in Athens, 2004. Um, it was, of course, the Olympics uh, starts from Greece, and uh, you know it was something even more um, important for uh, us Greeks. Wanted to do even uh, go even higher. Um, of course, you know you go by step by step. You put you, you make a, a long a long term um, your goal. You put your goals. Uh, four years that it was the Olympics, and you got short terms. You go year by year. Next year after the Sydney Olympics, I did my best. Um, I swam in the World Championships in Fukuoka, and I was seventh in the um, final of the 400 meters, and uh, that was my first breakthrough in um, swimming. Um, a final after a long term period of uh, uh, Greek athletes. Um, I think the. The only final we had um, was um, Eli Rusaki um, in, in 200 uh, butterfly. Um, I think it was about uh, 15 years uh, prior to my, uh, I think it was on 80, 80, 90, early 90s. Anyway, the, it was really, really good. And I was, and, and as I competed in the final, and in that final, it was the world, uh, Ian Thorpe. Did a world record on the 400 meters, so it was a, a really good race for me, and a really, good, of course, a really good race for him. Top. And what were you doing? Were you coaching? Were you working? Um, yes, of course. Um, um, I was focused on the sports. I was focused on swimming. Um, I was uh, I was um, in the University of Sports, um, and but you know uh, at that age I. Uh, uh, put uh, I, my mind was only in my focus. My, I was focused on the sport. So the next three years after 2001 were focused on the Olympics. I got to the uh, Olympic uh, um, Games. Uh, it was a, a lot of ups and downs before 2000, 2004. But that's how sport uh, works. That's how sports. That's how athletes are. They have good uh, good times and uh, they have. Uh, bad times, but um, I, I got to the Olympics and uh, it was a really good uh, Olympics for me in Athens. And you made the finals in both the 400 and the 1500, so you have arrived? Exactly, exactly. My my goal was the finals and I was dreaming, you know, you know, when uh, an athlete um, uh, it, it, it drives you just to, to dream about uh, the moment that you're going to be in a final, that you're going to uh, compete in a, in, a, in a top level like the Olympics. And it's the uh, highest level in the Olympics, of course. Um, it was really, really a uh, unique feeling. Um, I swam the 400 and I was in the, uh, qualified in the final. The afternoon in the final, it was just a, a wonderful um, atmosphere because it had a lot of uh, uh, Greeks, of course. Uh, it had a lot of Greeks, and uh, I even heard my name. You know, in swimming, you don't hear easy your name or your uh, shouting out for your country. So it was something um, really, really good. Uh, of course, the 1500 meters. The 1500 was my um, my favorite event. My favorite event, and I was fifth in uh, in the final. Uh, I swam against really great athletes. And you know that's really uh, that uh, is something that uh, I remember like it was just yesterday. Um, when did you start um, swimming competitively in the open water? I started swimming competitively. Uh, I, I think it was no, I think it was two thousand and seven, um, 
Um, no, I, I go a year, uh, a year back. Uh, it's 2006 in uh, Balkan Games. Um, I was having a, a chat with um, uh, Peter Stoicev. Peter was swimming in the open water events, so he, he came up to me and we were talking about uh, swimming in open water. And he told me, he said to me, why, Spiros, you're a good 1500 swim, uh, meter swimmer. Why don't you try the open water events? You know, it was the first time that I heard about the open water. And I knew about, of course, I knew about the open water, but um, he told me about the Olympics in 2008, that it's uh, the 10K is an Olympic event. And, you know, from that moment, I started thinking about uh, how um, how to, to try my first competition. Um, my first competition was in the World Championships in Melbourne in 2007. I swam the 5K and the 10K. Um, I went great in the 5K. I was third, and uh, you know, from uh, coming uh, I was an, uh, uh, from a pool event to an open event, open water event in Melbourne, and especially the water was really cold and uh, choppy. It was something um, uh, that I haven't, I never um, um, come, come, come across through, so it was really tough. Uh, but immediately, um, um, I just wanted to to try it again and again and again. And that's how open water came in my life. And um, the and it's a really unique sport. It's a, it's a really unique event. So Beijing was your first open water Olympics. Um, maybe an experience a little bit like Sydney. And then four years later, we bring you to London. Your uh, mother is English. So you had, uh, yeah. uh, you had your fan club and you took your first Olympic medal. Tell us about that, that final in London. Of course, um, before London, a uh, year before London, there was the World Championships in uh, Shanghai. And uh, with the qualification for the Olympics, of course, a uh, year before the Olympics uh, um, and the World Championships, the, the, you, you can qualify. So I qualified and I, I qualified and I was first and I won the World Championship in um, Shanghai. So, for me, it was the Olympics in London was I was feeling really good and I was in a really good condition. I trained, I, I trained really hard. It was my hardest year of training. I pushed myself um, really, really high. And you know, sometimes uh, when you I was 32 years old, and I, I thought I had the, the body of a 20 year old that it can uh, cope anything you give it in training. And um, this, I think, this cost a bit on my on the Olympics in 2012. I lost a bit of weight um, because the training was so high. I just couldn't uh, get back uh, on my normal um, weight of uh, competition weight. Um, in London, the water was a bit cold, and um, but I was really confident, to be honest, uh, that I was going to be in the top uh, top three position. And I was not in the top three, and I was top four. I was fourth, and you know it's really tough because <clears throat> when people, when uh, my oh, my whole family of my mother's side were in uh, Hyde Park watching the race, my uh, the, uh, my my country, my Greece, um, you know, I, 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 it felt that I disappointed them, and I felt, it felt that, that, that I let them down, and it was uh, really uh, I was so. Um, upset, frustrated, and uh, you know, um, it's the most difficult part of a, an athlete when um, he's he's planning for four years his competition to the day, and the day doesn't come. Um, this is something that you know, it's um, it's a lesson we learn, uh, but it's tough for everyone. Um, of course, uh, my my parents were there, my nan was there, my cousins. Um, you know, when I after the race, when I uh, went up to them, I just couldn't uh, keep my tears. Um, I was so upset. And um, but that's sport, and that's how uh, sport works, and it works in a mysterious way. But it makes you tougher and doesn't make you weaker. Did you think about retiring after London? Um, just before the uh, competitions, um, I was thinking maybe it will be my last um, my last race. Not because I wanted to, I, I was giving up, or because you know I was already in a lot of pain, especially with my arm. I had a, a problem with my elbow, 
and it was it was really I was I was pushing it to my to to the maximum that I my hand my hands could go through and of of course psychologically you know uh, being every day in the pool and pushing and pushing at the age of 32 it's uh, it, it's tough but um, on the after the race after the competition um, I was just my my thoughts were uh, uh, not exactly to give up I didn't want to I didn't want to think about giving up but you know I was uh, I let I let all my anger or my uh, um, but the um, psychology just uh, wash away uh, month by month. And after a few months, I uh, found my, myself again in the water and uh, training because I needed a period of um, just uh, relaxing and uh, clearing my mind up and uh, thinking straight. So in the beginning of um, the next year of 2019, I said to myself, okay, you're going to try again. You're going to try and qualify. And whatever happens, happens. Uh, you just, if you want to, that's how sport works. You're gonna try, you, but you're gonna leave trying, and not, you're gonna, you're not gonna leave by uh, a, disappoint, a disappointment or a bad moment. So that's how I got back in. So 2016 Rio, your fifth Olympics. Not too many people can say that. Um, one of the most exciting races that anybody's ever seen. Tell us about the the last kilometer of the race in Rio. Yeah, it was uh, it was I think it was one of the the, the tough toughest. It was of course tough tough race. It had a lot of um, um, tactic in it, and uh, the of course the 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 Australian guy uh, went out really fast from the beginning. He pushed the he pushed it to the limits. He he made, he, he was. He was. He did a breakaway. I think of a, a minute, a minute and a half away of, of uh, all the pack. And this um, situation gave a lot of, um, you know, a lot of, um, a lot of thought in the pack or what to do and how to react. And uh, you know, it was. I could feel the whole pack was um, in a panic mode. And you know, uh, you know, open water needs a clear mind um, and it needs a clear tactic. Um, I kept to my tactic. Um, at the last one k, um, I knew it was going to be my last one k of my swim or my or my co swimming career. I, I was uh, confident and I felt really good. But uh, you know, uh, I was like 36 years old and uh, I was competing with uh, 20 20 year old uh, um, swimmers that were in top top level and they were really really uh, in a really good condition. And uh, I knew this, and it was all down to. Experience, uh, experience of you know, uh, when you swim in the sea, it's different of swimming in the lake or a or a river. Of course, it's different than swimming in the pool. But we're, uh, we're comparing these three, um, um, and sea for me was always uh, something that I knew really. It was something easy for me because from a young, from a young age and uh, I swam. Um, of course, I was swimming for for fun. I was not swimming for trainer. But uh, you know, it, it was easy, and I. Uh, uh, the instincts of um, reacting on uh, even on the waves on the, when you've got some uh, you've got the athletes uh, really close on you uh, you know what to do um, on the last one case I put I uh, really put myself and uh, about 200 meters uh, to the finish um, I said to myself that if you want to do something you have to do it here and um, I knew I had really really fast uh, sprint uh, athletes on the end especially the last 50 meters it's all down to the um, endurance, of course, and uh, power and sprint. I had the endurance, I had the power, but I, I was not a, anymore a good sprinter. I knew I, I, need, I needed about a 200, 200 or 250 meter stretch of pushing really hard and trying to make my breakthrough. Um, this helped me, of course, in the podium position, but um, at the last uh, two meters, uh, Two, three meters, uh, the last 30 meters, sorry. Um, of course, Ferry Whitman did a really, really good race, and, he, and that's that is um, it is very good point. He, he, he did it uh, in the World Championship the next, the next year, and uh, I knew about Ferry Whitman's uh, finish, is really tough. And uh, he he finished just for half a second in front of me, um, and it was okay. I, 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 
I was going for gold, of course. Everybody goes for gold. And at the last minute, uh, I was really believing that I could do it. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, um, Ferry is, is top on uh, finish, on, on, on doing a really good finish. But, you know, it, it didn't upset me because it was my best ever um, um, medal, <laughs> even it, it tops even World Championship gold medals because it's Olympics. Olympics is, as I said, as everybody in sport knows, it's, uh, it's something unique. And I was, I was really happy for my second place. And especially in uh, the age of 36 years old and after five Olympics, you know, um, leaving Corfu at 17 years old, my dream was an Olympic uh, medal. And, you know, winning it after 90 years, 20 years, it's, uh, this is, uh, it makes that moment the moment of your life. And it's something that um, even thinking about it, it makes me so, so, um, feel so unique and so my unique feelings and uh, really it's something that uh, I really really um, makes me you know uh, like you know I did it and it's uh, it's the most important thing my, uh, you know putting goals and achieving your goals it's uh, uh, it's unbelievable. I met you in um, uh, Kalamata a year or two after the Olympics and uh, the kids went crazy. Um, do you still walk into a swimming pool? Do you still walk down a street and the kids go crazy? <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's a nice feeling when uh, the kids come uh, around and ask you about um, how was it in the Olympics? How was it in the swim? How did you swim there? And, um, you know, it's nice um, talking with the uh, uh, Younger or bigger uh, athletes or no, uh, even you know, mostly people who come up and talk and uh, ask me questions, and you know, it makes me feel nice because you know it's something that um, they see um, my career, and uh, and uh, you know, it's uh, it's better than uh, um, any medals or position or you know when when it's, especially when a young kid comes up to you and says to you oh i, I admire what you did and i wish i can uh, uh, get to your level and why not to pass you you know it's uh, i'll be better than you you know it makes you feel really really important and and um, and nice and uh, it just uh, i i love when uh, people come up and say this and i give the you know the the right the 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 the, impre the I don't know if it's the word words exactly. Uh, they, uh, make them and feel um, and give them a push to to their dreams and their uh, goals. You didn't have a Greek swimmer who was your hero, did you? Um, you know, I, I was looked up to Greek swimmers. Um, quite a few have passed. Uh, uh, I was reading about um, um, Greek swimmers, and I met, of course, I've met them all. Uh, the 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 ones who were there on the, the pool in um, the sport. Um, but uh, you know, my my role model was my um, it was Kieran Perkins from a from from a young age. Um, Gebrselas here, I really liked Gebrselas here, and how in in his in his way. And of course, as an athlete, and how he talked, and how he, you know, all his, um, all his uh, profile of an athlete, and uh, you know, you, 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 it's you, you try and take the little, little things or big things of people, and, and keep them for you, and uh, make them, and build on them, and keep, you know, try and try to see the good things in people, of course, and athletes, and uh, get, get, t taking them and doing them yours. For your for your next uh, for the next thing you want to do, um, that's what I think every every athlete should do. Um, watch, learn, and push to the goals and to uh, to achieve the goals. Of course. You're now more and more involved in the Greek Swimming Federation on the management level, and I understand some elections are coming up. Tell us what those are and what your plans are. Yes, the, the, the elections for the, the Greek Federation of Swimming, um, they're due to be of end of March. 
Um, I'm yes, I'm running for um, the presidency of my federation. Um, it's a decision I made um, leading uh, to lead a team, a team effort, of course, um, with goals and um, will, of course, and of course, vision. It's the most important. Um, um, in sport, uh, from a young age, um, I've seen a lot of, I've been through a lot, and uh, you know, from a low level, uh, low level to a high level, um, in sports, and seen all the, um, all that I think that um, the sports can, the, the pool events can see, and you know, all this, all this, um, all, the, all this. Um, uh, knowledge um, and suggestions, of course, and solutions um, that concern our sport um, is something that wants me, I, I would like to to uh, be active in. Um, of course, uh, it won't be easy, but you know, um, um, I've not learned that I've not learned the easy way. Uh, I would I really, I really like my sport and my sports, of course, because it's uh, we've got a lot. It's and water polo. And open water and, um, and diving and synchronized uh, swimming and the fins, of course. Uh, um, I think it's, it's uh, people who are active in sport should um, be in sport in any way. And uh, I really hope um, people will trust me. And uh, the next day, I will be there to help uh, and make our, our sport even bigger and uh, even in, in high level. And of course, in uh, young age, that's the important uh, in the young age and young ages uh, to keep them in sport and to keep them in the pool. Um, so yes, I will uh, try uh, for the pre presidency. Thank you, Ferris. Ferris, thank you very much for your time today. I, I want um, everybody to 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 take a minute and go back and look at that race in Rio. As exciting as the finish was there was some dispute about the finish and you handled that situation with incredible class. Um, so thank you for that. Yes, of course. Um, I would like to say a few words on um, the protest that it was uh, went through from the Greek uh, Federation. Um, for me, it was no protest. And, uh, you know, I found out um, um, as I was given an interview in the mix zone, um, um, the, the, the journalist was talking, uh, we were talking about the race and uh, how what the fee, my feelings and at the end of the conversation they told me uh, the, the Greek um, side is doing a protest. You know, at that point I said no, uh, I'm, because I knew I was second, I'm second. I left uh, the next zone, I went to uh, look for my, for my coach and my team members and uh, there I found out for real that there was a protest going on. Um, I asked my coach, I phoned my coach immediately. I said, uh, please um, stop the protest. Um, I don't agree because um, Ferry Women was first. I wish I was first. I wish I was faster than Ferry Women. Um, but that's sport. That's how things work in sport. And um, something that you don't want to do to you, you would not like to do back. And that's what my, um, that's, that's how I act. And the act in sport, um, it's the, the most important thing. You know, um, sport makes friends, and uh, uh, even okay, you compete in the war or whatever you're in a, a stadium or whatever. But um, it, the sport is is you keep it to the um, the ethics of sport, and the fair play is something that uh, for me it's uh, the most important thing. Um, so um, I was second. It was a very close race, but I didn't lose the first place. I won the second place. And um, and this is something that I, I always have in my and mm. um, like a feeling, and that's how I go. That's how I act. It's that, that that's me. What was your most difficult training session? You, I know, I I've seen you work. I mean, you're a tremendous worker. But what was your most difficult set that you did during your career? Um, <clears throat> the most difficult was uh, I, I, one of the toughest was in South Africa. I had it, uh, it was a period of three weeks and um, it was over uh, 110K a week. That was in 2012. <laughs> um, um, I remember I had six 1500s 
um, negative. And um, this was one of the toughest ones. And um, and a few days later, I did 10 800s, 10, 10 times one 800 meters. It was 53 for 50 butterfly. And I think that was one of the toughest ones. Uh, I put that, I really, I was at the end of, at the end of that set, uh, my hands just could not uh, even, I couldn't even drink my, my water. Wow. Um, I had, uh, you know, I had a lot of difficult uh, sessions. The hardest ones, of course, were in the high altitude because it's uh, you're on high altitude, and um, but you know uh, uh, the harder the better the, the, the harder the, the trainer was. The uh, I, I was looking forward for even you know uh, uh, let me say correct the harder the better the, the, the as hard as better um, if if it's correct uh, saying this yeah. um, I always looked at having hard training. Um, um, I, th- I can. It's quite a lot of trains um, I did at, on this level. Um, one of the toughest was I did a 10k every week for one month, and it was a 10k test. Um, you know, it's a lot. It's not only physically; it's psychologically because when you start after the two, three k, and you know, you say you've got another one and a half hour of really pushing. And in, in the pool, I'm not talking about the open water in the pool, yeah. and going up and down, up and down, and by yourself, of course. Um, it's it's a lot to do with your with the, the, your mindset, and um, my mindset was always doing it. Never, I never, never given up. Um, it was if I gave up in a, a training set, it was like giving up in a race, and it was um, that was that was driving me. So I, I, I loved I loved hard training. Yeah, yeah. Do you remember what your time was in that in the fastest uh, ten thousand meters you did in the practice? Yeah, I did. Uh, I swam on a, on a pace of one one oh four. That was just that was just before the Olympics in London. Wow. So I was on one hour forty eight, I think. Um, the first five uh, k was on. 52, 52 min, uh, 50, sorry, 54 minutes 30, and the second one was fast, much faster. Um, I think it was about that. I was I was pacing on one four. I, I, I can't remember what one four what, but I was on a pace of one four. Yeah. Um, and the the I did another 10k on a test. Like uh, the 10k was uh, swimming on a comfortable pace for the eight and a half uh, k. Um, on one seven, on one six one seven, and then really pushing the last fifteen hundred meters, and uh, not fifteen hundred, the last fifteen hundred, I swam on fifteen on ten, fifteen ten. Wow! Oh wow! Uh, uh, some some some, uh, you know, uh, if you ask uh, open water swimmers, they, they they swim they swim crazy times in training because they love training. Of yeah. course, they love the competition. But the competition has got a lot of um, a different. Um, Things and uh, things can happen, of course. And uh, but in training, it's more in a in a comfortable zone. <laughs> um, so uh, I really the, the only bad thing is I've never you know uh, sat down and lighted all my times in training. But uh, I, I always I always put goals and I always wanted to go a bit faster. Even in the age of thirty five and thirty four and thirty six years old than I was doing earlier years, you know. It, it was okay. I, I couldn't do it with the frequency I could do it, and uh, when I was 28, but I, I, I was doing a lot, um, less meters. Like on the last two years of the Olympics, uh, I dropped quite a lot of um, my training. Uh, I was I was doing an average of uh, on up to 212, uh, an average of 80, 90 k, and uh, and on uh, training camps I was getting up to 120. Uh, but uh, the last two years, uh, my maximum was 85. I could not, I could not, 85 with 90k, I could not do more than that because my hands were uh, uh, in a lot of pain. And I had to, of course, um, um, keep my body in a good shape, even if that cost me uh, on uh, a K in the week. Yeah, yeah. And I want to ask one question. I was, um, um, commentating at the 2008 Olympics 
Yeah. Um, you actually took the lead uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. about, I would say, maybe one or 1 1.2 kilometers to go. And you really, exactly, exactly. really went in the lead. You know, that was a, um, open, uh, when we started open water, um, nobody told us, of course, open water was pretty new in this kind of level, yes, yeah. this high level of um, 10K and uh, competitive uh, on, the, on the world champion, um, world champions and, and Olympics. And um, we, 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 it was training and of course training was something new. We were, we were always experimenting and on the training, training wise yeah. and on tactic. Um, I was I had it at, at the Olympics in 2008. I had a really good uh, 1500. I swam at 1453, and that's still the Greek record in uh, Greece. And it's a really good time, you know. It's uh, first Greek that I swam on the 15 15 15 uh, 15 uh, under 15. Yeah. Um, and uh, I was feeling really good, so I was really confident. And this was a bit, you know, that that was my problem. I was too confident. Oh. Uh, got in the race, swimming easy, going up and down, and this was open water is not going uh, uh, up and down. It's keeping your pace, keeping your tactic, uh, focusing on what you want to do in the last one k, and not going up and down and uh, sprinting and uh, then dropping back and going backstroke and uh, then sprinting again. So on the last one k, about I really did a breakaway. And I said, okay, this is my chance of breaking away. And I did, I was about 20, 25 meters ahead. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, at, at that point, I sort of, I sort of I kept my pace. But uh, I, I thought, uh, I, I had a second uh, thought. And uh, uh, maybe you should keep your, uh, drop your pace because I don't know if you're going to cope. That's what I said to myself. And that was the biggest mistake. I sort of keep my pace up to the last meters and whatever happened. And uh, as I dropped my pace, the other guys, of course, yeah. came up. Yeah. And uh, that was it. Yeah. And you know, uh, I was uh, maybe uh, I, uh, I, I wasn't for a podium position, but I was, of course, in a position of one of one, one uh, up to six or fifth, six yeah. maybe. But I was so disappointed that everybody came up to me really fast. And um, you know, uh, psychology as everything, and especially in open water, pushing yourself to nearly for two hours, it just can go to bits in a matter of uh, seconds. And that's what I have. That's what happened. Ah, oh, wow! Thank you. I'm... Lesson learned. Lesson learned. Yes. <laughs> Again, thank you very much, Kiros.